Hello, welcome to Dare the Genius, a session with Errol Musk. I'm Annika, clinical psychologist. Um, Errol, if one think what happened from where you were to where Elon is today, it's actually pretty amazing. If you think when you were a child and you told us that uh, you lived with your mother and father initially, it was a very difficult circumstances where you stayed, you didn't even have your own bedroom really. Um, I'm not just curious about what you did, but also the approach that you follow, because there's maybe other people that may be also curious how they can apply it to their own lives. So something that I see um, in your approach to things, sometimes I would think you are very definite on how you want to do things and what must be done. But the moment that you get new information, you adjust your approach and, you know, it's, there's a kind of ingenuity. Ingenuity, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that I see. Maybe you can give us an example of uh, your approach. There are so a lot of examples. I mean, uh, the, at one point I had a very large uh, aircraft which I bought, which, um, um, uh, you know, could fly at the height of the jets and everything. It was uh, a business run and I needed to sell it. I was told I was I'm married to it. In South Africa, I'm married to it because it was after '85 in South Africa in those days, and um, the uh, you know everything was just falling apart. And I was told I'm married to the to this large airplane, and uh, so I found a company in England, and they said, no, if I if it's got full de icing, I can bring it there, and they will buy it. So I set off with it, and um, <clears throat> we got uh, our next stop after several stops was Jeddah, where they turned out they were having they'd approved the flight plan, but on their way they told us. That they have um, a religious eat on eat on the go. That's uh, E I D, and um, that if we come back, if we land, then it's going to cost us two thousand dollars, and it's, and if we stay, it's going to be six hundred dollars a day uh, to park the plane, even if they can find parking. Mm -hmm. And so I turned around and we flew to Lake Tanganyika. We said fine. They said because the the Saudi said if we come two weeks time, they'll give us fuel at five cents a liter. So you didn't plan initially at all? No, so I turned around, we flew to Lake Tanganyika and we landed at the new airfield that we found, they saw there, and uh, met the people who built the airfield and um, told them I was selling this plane and they offered to buy it. So yeah, I said fine. So um, they, they paid me the same amount that I was going to get overseas, so it was a good deal for me and um, for them. And, um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, and then I uh, took some of that money and used it with them to enter into the emerald business and um, with them. They, they had a small emerald deposit that they were mining. And uh, so I became, for the next five years, quite a big emerald uh, sort of uh, seller. Oh, so you trade in it? So it's yeah, I started really trading. Like I started cutting and, and, and making cut gems and yeah, selling them yeah. wholesale to jewelers. Okay, so it's not yeah. like owning the mine, it is like well, um, trading in the... Uh, well, yes, yeah, so it's, look, it's not a mine. I mean, emeralds are surface, so it's surface mining. So you get a little deposit. doesn't mean you've got some giant ongoing mine for life. You know, it, it mm -hmm. doesn't work like that. You find a little deposit and you mine that little deposit. That's, that's, that's all it is. You can't uh, just go on and on and on and on and on, you know. But that was not your business, it says, from uh, listening when you were a child under the table to your mom's family or the... Um, the, 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 all that people yeah, well, that came to your house. Yes, as a child, I, my parents were immigrants, and we we had two bedrooms, two rooms, and most of the immigrants only had one room with two people in it. And we had two rooms. And mm -hmm. um, so the second room, my parents turned into a lounge, and that was where I slept on a couch until I was about 10 years of age. And uh, so um, the other immigrants were able to come to my parents' uh, extra room, and and have the evening, you know, have the evening together and sing all the Irish songs and English songs and even the French songs. And they would, uh, I would, under those circumstances, of course, I couldn't sleep. I had to lie under the table, the dining room table that my mom had. And uh, she tried very hard to make the room very nice. And um, I would sleep with a blanket and a pillow under the table and then and, and the, the, the hammering on the table, you know, bang, bang, bang. <laughs> these guys would know when they made their points in their oh, arguments okay. and things you know that used to wake me keep me awake and I would listen to them and listen to their stories and 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 uh, so it was quite um, interesting so I was able to do what other children aren't able to do I was able to listen to adults arguing and 
and they didn't use bad language at all in those days because it's mixed company anyway. And uh, so it was more a case of them arguing about the war and what they proposed to want to do in the future and all that kind of stuff. And um, so, uh, you know, it was uh, one, some of them became CEOs of big companies later on. And um, But if you think from there to within a few years, I mean, you were really a... a, a no, yes, so in one generation. Man. Yes, in one generation, we've hopped from me sleeping under the table to uh, my son being the wealthiest person in, in the history of the world. But for yourself, also within a five to ten years, I mean, you you completely changed your own financial situation. Yes, yes, and yes. It was not just because of the emeralds; you did other oh, things no, no, no. as well. Oh no, 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 long before the emeralds. The I emeralds mean, years was just before the it. icing on the cake. Uh, the plane I'm talking about selling was my fortieth aeroplane. So the big plane, the biggest plane that I was selling was my 40th airplane. So it's not that I, you know. And so, um, yeah, I, I, when I, I managed to get a scholarship to go to university, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to go, and um, um, from Anglo. And then they, I um, got other help as well financially and managed to do the, the degree and everything, the degrees I needed to do. And then I, I joined a company that was consulting engineers, and they, the, the, their practice was ailing, and they left the country, and I took over the practice. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it took me about four years to completely, um, well, two years, I suppose you could say, two years to completely change my circumstances. And, um, you know, within four years of, of graduating, I was earning 10 million, the equivalent of 10 million rands a year. So... Uh, I, I found that I was quite good at uh, engineering and, and, I, and people soon figured that out. And, you know, one of the big companies that we had, one of the big uh, retail companies that we had, uh, the uh, OK Bazaars Group, they, they actually took my drawings and framed them and put them on behind glass along the corridors as examples of what drawings should look like. Um, in, their, in, their in their development offices, in their design offices, yeah. you know, what drawings yeah. should look like. So it was quite, quite, a, quite an honorable thing, nice thing. I mean, you know, quite an honor to have them do that. And, um, yeah, so, you know, I was like uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, consulting engineer through the night, getting calls from what people. What did you do? What kind of projects I'm did an electrical you do? mechanical engineer. So my work was to do with the uh, insulation of electricity and the insulation of air conditioning, heating, ventilating, ventilation, um, you know, whatever goes with that, lifts, elevators, sound, communications, everything, you know. So it's a very uh, integral part of the, the building. It's about 25% of the building, every building is made up of those items. If you think back, what was your biggest deal that you had? The biggest deal I did, biggest project we put up was uh, Menland Shopping Centre, which is the biggest shopping centre in the Southern Hemisphere. So I was one of the four owners of that. And um, I was the youngest, and um, I had these three older Jewish men, they were wonderful. And they, 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 they sort of took me on board. I, I found myself signing for astronomical loans at the time to run this thing without really realizing what I was signing. But um, I signed anyway, But because I, I trusted these people a lot. But I soon would get the, we'd go to the meetings and the company meetings, and I'd be told in today's terms, I. In today's terms, I owe 34 million or something, or 44 million in, in today's money. It, in those days, it was, you know, quite a lot less because it was 50 years ago, mm. nearly 50 years ago. So, um, but, you know, so it used to worry me because I would mix with people my age and my wife didn't understand the, the worry that I had because sometimes the these partners of mine would, would convey to me their fear, their worry that the thing is not going to work out. And so I uh, had to sort of make you feel kind of uh, worried, you know. And um, and so um, <clears throat> my family didn't understand it. And uh, I suppose you could say with uh, Elon and them, they, 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 they picked up sort of uh, um, cavalier attitude from me, a certain, from me as well as they grew up with me that we do these sort of things. And so they took chances in America, which uh, other people wouldn't even dream of taking. So I mean, when Elon was left with $100 million, he, he just put it in, into SpaceX and said, you know, this is it, I'm putting it into SpaceX, finished. Other people wouldn't do that. They'd, they'd, they'd most certainly not do that. But we do that kind of thing. And it's a cavalier attitude. And, uh, yeah. 
So, you know, it paid off. I mean, SpaceX is valued at well over 100 billion today, but I mean, it's actually worth about 500 billion. So, um, you know, um, yeah, so that's how it happened. And uh, I, um, you know, kept up that pace through my career, trying to, um, you know, achieve all the things that people want. And um, I always thought if you're wealthy, you have horses and racehorses and you have fancy sports cars and you have airplanes and yachts and farms and all that sort of stuff. I've never actually caught on to the idea of being wealthy where it's, you, you're in a little, little car in a little, little house and and you, people tell me I, they got lots of money, but it's in the bank. Well, I say, well, that's not, that's not so good. Should be actually helping other people with that money. <laughs> okay, if I, if I can do a, a side ball. Yeah. So, say you have a setup and it's your rules. Yeah. So, if somebody come and they give you information that that is good information. Yeah. Uh, will it cause you to alter your word, yes, your, obviously your, your word that's maybe law or <laughs> obviously, but that starts right at the beginning. I mean, you 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 are forever checking like a like a tightrope walker. You you forever checking which way you're going. You you not you, you alter according to the immediate pressures that that you face with. I mean, it's not like you suddenly make a jump, you know, because then you've got a real problem. But there have been occasions when things have happened sort of out of our control where we've, you know, had to um, change course a little bit and maybe um, uh, when we would get, for example, refusal to put a, an ice drink in a sister, in a set, in a place we would simply put it underground after that, <laughs> dig, a, dig a hole in and we, and we put the ice drink underground. So for example, Starland, which Starland, which is a big cinema complex in Pretoria, we put the when we refused permission for the ice rink, we put it under, under underground, okay. and um, and we did that on several other places as well, so that uh, we could avoid the these these uh, negative rulings from the bureaucrats, which are our enemies. They are our born enemies. People like me, anyway. <laughs> the enemy. <laughs> the reason? <laughs> no, because they ruin everything. You know, the world is in the worst state it's ever been with bureaucratic governments left, right, mm -hmm. centre. Who are quite uh, incapable of governing and um, have no idea how money is created, have no idea how anything is created, and they're trying to tell everybody else what to do. And they, they you know, um, becoming uh, bold, uh, very, what they call bolchy about it. I mean, uh, this Biden monkey, he's, um, he's, he's standing in front of uh, red screens with Nazi type signs behind him screaming that. He, that they will carry on on their scheme, you know. You may not have seen it, but the whole world has seen it. So, except uh, people don't get much news here. But anyway, the thing is, <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, um, yeah. So, so if they I are saw... the swan enemy. Okay. Uh, can you recall, or did it happen that sometimes you were in uh, the house while Kimmel and Elon is maybe still children, and they they come up with better ideas than yours, and that you will change? plan also. Yeah, we are. If we were going somewhere for the weekend or something, they say, let's not go. <laughs> let's go somewhere else. No, oh, then you'll yeah, change sure, the plan. Yeah, why not? And with Ali? Oh, no, no, no. With the girls in my family, you you, you, you have no choice. You, you go where they want to go, you know, so it's not like you <laughs> You actually, have to alter plan. No, you don't have to alter anything because your plan is, you don't have a plan. It's only, the only plan is their plan. <laughs> so, so, so you can forget about having a plan with when the girls are around, you know, the daughters. Yeah. They, they, they make the plans. What qualities in you do you think Elon inherited that help him to be a, the success that he is today? I think uh, one of the biggest or things is, is an ability to disassociate yourself from things around you and enter into a kind of uh, meditation trance-like mood. And in you, when you do that, you're able to, something tells you, Something in your head tells you this is what has to be done, and then you you follow that. Mm -hmm. And um, and I have that, and Elon has that. So much so with Elon that sometimes when people are talking to him, he, he's simply staring, and they realize he's sort of not there. And then they will eventually make some sort of move, and he'll he'll jolt out of out of it. And and oh, so yes, I, I, and and then at the same time, he did hear what they were saying. 
So he would say, yes, 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 that's a good idea. But in the meantime, he was somewhere else, you know, some problem. I had that I, 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 I saw like that, that a few times here. Yeah, I was like um, that. When we um, have an appointment and I come here for something that we have to go through and you are working on the Bentley or the Rawls or some place. Yeah, you have to focus on that. Or even on your little things there in the yeah, kitchen that's not whatever. kitchen things. Yeah, whatever. Then I'm standing there and I, I can't get your attention. You are busy. Yeah, I, cannot, you, yeah, I can talk, but you're like not that. going to talk back until you're ready. You complete yeah, another process you, first. Yeah, so we, Elon got that from me. Kimball, I haven't seen that so much with Kimball. He's more hands-on and conscious, cognitive, I suppose you might say. And um, But it's that ability to disassociate yourself mm. from uh, your surroundings and you know, uh, look at some part of you looks at whatever the problem might be differently and then you, you suddenly realize this is what you should be doing and then you come out of that and then you say, you turn to people and say, this is what we need to do. And um, yeah, so you don't got that from me. I had that and, and um, you know, it explains the fact that, you know, two years after leaving university, um, well, well, certainly within three or four years of leaving university, I I'm the biggest house in Pretoria, and 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 uh, and it's today the headquarters of the, of the United Nations in the Southern Hemisphere, and I um, have aircraft, yachts, everything which I could no, I want think to, you know. Almost coming from from where you were as a child, I, I think sometimes it's almost um, a bit incredible to absorb what happened with you. And I mean, if you walk here in the street and you think about your sons, and I mean, it's it's uh, quite a step. From well, yes, I think. What uh, would the, your mother have said about Elon? Well, I think she would if she, say, if she's alive. Today. Yeah, you know, you, you, if if I said to my mother that uh, you know I've done this and that, she'd say, well, that's your job, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know. But um, no, I mean, they, 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 your mother passed away before um, all these latest successes of Elon were published. No, she she passed away when Elon had already made a great deal of success, and so she was fully aware of that, and. Um, but her approach was pragmatic, you know, and, um, you know, she know, knew Elon better than anyone else, perhaps, than, than, than me, uh, because she, she spent so much time with him as a child. But, because, uh, you know, she was like mm. the stand-in mother. Mm. But um, I, um, you know, uh, I didn't think like my parents, that's for sure. So something changed, something, something was different. My parents seemed to accept poverty as a, as a sort of, you know, you have to be poor. There's no other alternative. Whereas I didn't. I I said no, no. You you, you don't have to do this. You you, you can do something else. And um, so I did. Yeah, it's difficult. I think if it's immigrants, um, you know, to move. Um, yeah, well, then it's, yeah, to, for them to having a bathroom, having uh, uh, cupboards and things, because you didn't have it over there overseas. You know, it was yeah. very harsh. Thank you very much, Errol. Um, just something very sweet that I saw you for the first time since I've known you I ask you um, can you show me something about Tosca and uh, Passion Freaks oh, yeah. <laughs> and you saw her on the screen <laughs> yeah. directed by Tosca Musk. Yeah. and she, she, was, she was in the well, she makes movies called Passion Flicks and she makes dozens of movies they you know they're yeah. unwatchable by men really <laughs> <laughs> and, then you, and then you say this is my Tosca oh, yeah, it's my Tosca, it's my Tosca, Tosca. But, but uh, yeah, but um, but yeah, she's made an enormous success out of it, and um, I mean, she's got to get an Oscar in due course, and, and uh, it's going to grow and grow and grow. The kind of movies are the kind of movies that women absolutely love, you know, like The Notebook and, and books, movies that okay, men. Okay, we know you are you are men. You can't sit that. through that. We know. You know. We know you are men. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, but you have a few daughters or three. Yeah, the, the daughters, okay. yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. But thank you. It's just a little bit of a window on um, how Errol perceives this. Thank you, Errol. Okay. Thank you.